But God's good. Let's talk about renewal. Renewal. Reviving our heart for God. Rededicating our life to God. Kim and I were married two years ago. This coming Tuesday. Boy, time's moving, ain't it? Come on. It's amazing stuff you can go through in life and pain you can go through in life. God never changes. God's always loving. God's faithful, isn't He? Say, God's holy and righteous. His ways are perfect. But we feel like we're going to die, right? That's how we feel. And I know those feelings. But two years ago, Kim and I got married. And here we are celebrating an anniversary coming up this Tuesday, two years. And so last year on our first anniversary, I got together with the staff and I said, you know what, I'd like to have like a renewal Sunday. I'd like to renew my commitment to Kim. And maybe other people would want to renew their commitment to uh, their wife or their husband. And that's how that idea happened. It all really happened just because I would like to do that. You know? I want to have a good marriage. You know? And for me, you know, it's, whew, at my age... We'll see what happens, amen? That was going pretty good. We're excited about it. But that's, so that's how renewal came about. And out of that came also talking about just renewing our commitment to Christ, giving individuals a chance to have a, just a fresh start, you know, before the season wraps comes around. It's just the home folks. Snowbirds aren't here. It's just us, you know. We just get our heart right with God and get ready to serve the Lord even more. You hear where I'm coming from? So that's what we're talking. That's where, what's where this idea came from. And so today's message, you know, it's just a revival of our minds and hearts for Christ. And now we're going to roll with it. And we'll, we'll see where we go. I think it, it'll be a blessing to us today. Raj has some steps for us right there. Biblical steps to renewal and revival. Say that with me. Biblical steps to renewal and what? Now it sounds fancy, but can you say it with me a little bit louder? Biblical steps to We're not going to be a lot of hype today. Not going to be a lot of hype. Now, I'm always going to be emotional and loud. That's always going to happen. However, see that word biblical? Say, if you're going to have renewed heart and a renewed mind for Jesus Christ, it needs to be based on the Bible. Okay? Not sending some fellow a check on TV and getting you a handkerchief or something. Did you hear me? Yes or no? Okay? Solid teaching. Solid steps. How can I go from being away from God to getting back right with God and restored and close to God again in my life. How can I do that? And I don't know where you are today. You might be, you know, you might have just walked away from God for a while. You might be doing like Paul said, like we all struggle with, the flesh and the, and the spirit. And you're battling a sin in your life. Something You're struggling with something. This is a great opportunity today to make a commitment. Would you listen today as an individual? Would you be selfish today in this service and just worry about you today? Yes or no? Say Try not to think about anybody else, what so-and-so said or did or what they wore today. Would you just leave that alone for a little bit? This is your chance today on 9-7-2014 to get right with God. And I want that for you, but I want that for Gary too. Amen? So some biblical solid steps. Let's go with the message. Renewal or revival means. What does that mean? You can get a Webster dictionary and you'll find out what renewal or even revival mean. But according to the Scriptures as well, it means to return to a consciousness of who? Of God. Or to return to what? Effectiveness for God. It's getting to the place again where when you make decisions, you're conscious of what He thinks. Yes or no? And getting back to the place where you can be effective for God. In your family, in your community, wherever. But you can feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward in my life for God. I'm, I'm being effective. I'm making a difference. Maybe not the biggest difference, but I'm making a difference. Amen. Well, you're not going to do that if you're not living for God. You're not going to do that if you're not right with God. So how can I get that consciousness of God back and that effectiveness to God back? For me to return to a consciousness of God and for me to be effective for God, here we go, there are certain what? Help me. That I must take. Certain steps that I must take. And that's what we want to talk about today. Here's the point. How do I make sense of the mess of my life? 
How do I make sense of those letters right there? How can I, how can I make sense of okay? I, I live for God now. I'm not living for God. How, how can how can I get how can I get it back? Now here's the deal: whether you believe it or not, it's the scriptures. You didn't have squat to do with God loving you. Do you know that? Yes or no? Do you, do you agree with me? Can we be honest? Okay, He loved you first. You didn't write him a letter and say, "Hey, please have Jesus die for me." He died. But God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet what? Sinners, Christ died for who? For us. So we didn't, have, we didn't have a thing to do with God loving us. We didn't have a thing to do with Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. And it might be hard to wrap your head around this, but if you truly put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and you're His child, He is not going to leave you. Even if you walk away from Him. That's a hard concept to realize, isn't it? I'm not talking about you going to hell because you've slidden back or because you are not as conscious of God as you used to be. I'm not talking about that. Now, if you're not a believer in Christ, you are going to hell. That's what the Scriptures teach, right? Say. Sure it does. But if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, but you are not walking with Him, it's not that He's, he's not there. He is right there. Amen? Amen? The Bible says the spirit can be quenched. The spirit can be grieved. Just like a dad. He is a dad to us. And a dad has a, a son or a daughter that's walking the wrong way. That dad will be grieved and, and hurt, right? That's how God feels. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you. How many of you have a kid that walked the wrong way and you loved him more than ever through all that? Nearly killed you. It's what we do, right? Where did we learn to do that from Him? So the point is today, is He loves you. He's there for you. Will you come back to Him? You might say, Clark, I'm, I haven't walked away from Him. Well, would you use this time today to just see where you are and get closer to Him? Say, can we leave the service today with everybody in this room, everybody in this room being honest with God and confessing Every known sin that we have. Why can't we leave clean today? Did you hear me? Yes or no? They yeah, can't do it if you're playing games. You can't do it if I just push a button and you just make you do it. No, it has to be honest and sincere. But there's some biblical steps that you can take and make some mess out of what you saw on that Scrabble board. And we put them together for you. And let's see what we've got. Biblical steps to renewal. How do I do it, Pastor? How do I come back to God? Because see, He never moved. Say he never moved. He never moved. You did. How many made dumb decisions in your life? Horrible, crazy, crazy, dumb decisions. There you go, see? And you did it, right? Say, I did. That's how that works. You do it, I do it, he does it. Okay? So he's, he's not moved. So how do I get back? Number one. Say that with me. Number one. Say it. Come on. Respect. Respect the Lord. That's step number one. If I'm talking to you right now, or you're listening on the radio, and as I talk to you about getting a bit closer to God, you're going, ah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't care about Him. Well, you know, then don't think you're going to get close to Him, okay? It ain't happening. You've got to respect the Lord. You've got to want to do this. You've got to want to do this. The word respect means to fear the Lord. We've all screwed up, right? Say but it's that want to because He's holy, He's righteous, He's my dad. I want to honor Him. I know my life's not right. I don't do it because I'm scared He's going to kill me or He's going to, you know, disown me. He's not. I do it because I care for Him. I care for what He thinks. You understand? Respect the Lord. Romans 1. And even as they did not like to say that word with me, retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate, reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignantly, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they, all, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, 
not only do the same, but they have what? Have you ever sinned as a Christian had pleasure in doing it? So I can't see your hand. Some of you, I guess, are just so spiritual you never sin. Is that what's happening? Why did you sin then? You didn't like it? I just thought I'd do it, but I didn't like it. Let's answer the question again. Let's ask again. How many sinned and you did it because it was fun? You had pleasure in it? Because now we're talking. I know this passage of Scripture is talking about a lot of unbelievers there. I understand that. But I'm going to tell you something right now. When you as a believer, you get away from God, you don't fear God, you don't respect God, you do the same exact things on that screen. Did you hear me, yes or no? And I'm going to tell you something, the same thing's going to happen. As you don't want to retain Him, as you don't want to retain Him in your head and in your heart because you want to do what you want to do and I want to do what I want to do, I'm going to tell you something, don't be surprised if you go do some things that a reprobate does. Did you hear me? Yes or no? Well, how's that going to work, Clark? How am I going to get back with God? I'm going to tell you something. You've got to respect Him. You hear me? Respect the Lord. The fear or the respect of the Lord is the beginning of what? It's the beginning of you getting your crazy head right. Respecting Him. He ain't picking on you. You don't have a green light just because somebody did something to you. You still have to do the right thing. Amen, say. Yeah, but everybody else was doing it. Doesn't matter. You belong to me, God says. You're my kid. You're my son. You're my daughter. And you having respect enough for Him to go, I am and I'm glad I am. Okay? So, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools do what? Don't expect to get right with God if you're going to despise even though you might be in the middle of it right now. You sure would be wise not to despise His teaching for you and His precepts for you and His best for you. Amen? Respect the Lord. So, how do I make a mess? Uh, how do I make some sense out of this mess, Clark? How do I come back to God? Well, number one is respect the Lord. Say that with me, please. It's not that hard. We're playing a game here. We're going to see what we got. We're trying to make some mess, and I'm trying to get me some points. What we got here? R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Isn't that what we just learned? Say, can we do that again? Because that was cool. Pop it up. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Did you get it? You want to get right with God? You want to side? You want to get there the side way? And now I want to do what I want to do, and I don't want to respect what He says? Then you ain't going to be right with God. You're fooling yourself, and you're playing a game. Capiche? Respect. Well, what did we learn out of that first point? Retain God in your head and in your heart and have respect for Him because if you don't, you're going to be this right over here. you got you some more points. You're going to be a reprobate. You're going to live your life like He don't even exist. That's not what I want, do you say? So, I'm going to R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Did you get that one down, number one? I like that one. Here we go. Let's go with another one. We're talking about biblical steps right out of the Bible. How can I get back to the place, or maybe it's going to be for the first time for me, where I'm really serving God and I'm right with God. This is good for all of us. You might find out what step you're on. I don't know where you're at on these steps. Number two, how do I do it? Say that with me. Remember the... Would y'all help me? Y'all go go sleep on me. Remember the... Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to do what? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might what? Receive the adoption of sons. And because your sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your heart, crying, Abba, what? Or Daddy. Remember the Lord. Remember what He's done for you. Wherefore, you're no more a what? But a what? You're no more a what? A servant, but a what? You're not a servant, but you're a what? Or a daughter, say daughter. One more time. One more time. That's who you are. Remember that. Remember who you are. You're out there walking away from God because you forgot who you are. Did you hear?
hear me today? That's bull. You just don't know who you are. That's my dad. He loves me. He's not going to throw me out with the trash like people do. Remember that. It's good stuff. Amen? You know he didn't have to write that in the Bible for you and me, but he did it because he loves the pieces. You know, he just loves And he knows we're going to struggle with the flesh and it's going to be hard down here. He gives us things like that. Isn't it, isn't it beautiful? Come on. And if you're a son, then you're a what? A what? How many are hardly ever had nobody leave you nothing? Can I see your hand? That's a bunch of us in here. <laughs> when my dad died, he had a little box this big. Most valuable thing was a wore out Timex watch. That's it. That's it. When my mother was murdered. My stepdad took everything, diverted funds before he killed himself, killed her. Nothing. That's that. That's not the way my Heavenly Father's doing it. You hear me, yes or no? I'm His son, and I'm an heir to all things in Jesus Christ. I need to remember that, don't I say? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through, baby. Amen? Come on. I'm a pilgrim and a stranger down here. My father has stuff waiting on the other side for me. Remember this kind of thinking. Do you hear me? Yes or no? How do I get back close to God? Because we forget. That's what we do. We don't think this way. Because we live here on planet earth. What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? you got the Holy Ghost in you. Are you crazy? Did you hear me? Yes or no? Hey, you want to sleep around next time? Go have sex with that woman outside of marriage. Remember the Holy Ghost climbing in bed with you. Enjoy. Excuse me. Did you hear me? Have you lost your mind? Are you hearing me today? We ain't trying to be funny, but this is funny. Remember the Lord. You're bought with a price. The blood of Jesus Christ. Your body is not your own. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the living God is in you, which you have of God. We forgot. Remember. You hearing me today? I'm listening. I'm listening for Gary today. That's all I'm doing up here. For you're bought with a price, man. Therefore glorify who? In your what? And in your... Which are who? Guts! Wow. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm away from God. Point number one on the Scrabble board was R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Respect the Lord. But I got another word now. We're going to win. Here we go. Here's my next word. Ooh, that's a big one. Say that with me. Remember. One more time. One more time. And we got three little words coming off of this one. Let's do it. Repay. Wait. I can't. I can't. I can't repay what he did for me. I can't re I remember, but I can't repay it. Hello. How are they? You know what they're saying? They're saying Philly's going to lose today. <laughs> they are. Watch and see if you don't have them. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's good to have Pete back with his twin brother. Come on. Let, love on him a little bit. Come on. I love them. The only thing I don't like about both of you is them jerseys. But anyway, here we go. Listen, back to the message. Here we go. Remember. Now, can I repay for the things I've done and the sins I've committed in my life? Can I go back and redo everything? Yes or no? No, I cannot. So remember, repay, I can't. Recover. Wait a minute. I can. Say, I can. I, you got to know that. If I remember, if I know who I am, regardless of what I've done in my past, I can recover. I can get back right with God. Did you hear me? And number three, redeemed. Redeemed. Say that with me. I am. One more time. Redeemed. 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 Remember that, would you? Remember that. Don't let the devil screw your head up and think that you've got to go back and repay. You, can't in, you didn't pay anything to begin with. He paid it all. Just know that you can recover. 
Because he'll tell you, you can't get back. You can't get back. You're bad. You're dirty. You're nasty. You're a sinner. You said you're a Christian. You act like this. You're not. You'll hear all that mess. You say, yes, I can because I am redeemed. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. Third biblical step to renewal and to revival and a closeness with God. Number three, uh uh-oh, it's going to get ugly now. Here we go. Say that with me. Receive from... Amen. Thank you, bud. Receive rebuke from the Lord. What are we talking about? As many as I love, I what? And chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and what? Repent. See, God's not picking on you because other people get to go do whatever. Okay? And He's not picking on you because this is the way the Christian is supposed to live. He's not picking on you. Okay? He wants you to be holy. He wants you to live for Him. He wants you to do the right thing. And when His Word is contrary to the way you're living, receive His Word. Amen. Say. In the book of Revelation, John was told to eat the book. That's what we need to do. We need to eat His book. That's what we need to do. We need to eat His Word. Amen. I'll eat my own words, the things I've done wrong, and I'll I'll replace all that and eat his his word instead. Amen? Come on. You ever had to eat your own word sometime? If you eat his word, you'll be fine. Come on. Eat that book, man. Receive rebuke from the Lord. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as children. My son, don't despise the chastening of the Lord nor faint when He rebukes you. You're not being picked on because you don't get to live any way you want to live. Okay? God calls you His child. You're, you're an heir of God. He's called you to go out and give the gospel and share the good news and be salt and light on this planet. He gave His Son for you. And He ain't taking back what He said. He has a way for you to live and you need to live that way. Did you hear me? Yes or no? You hear me? And when you're contrary and you're not doing the right thing, God is right and you're wrong. Receive it that way. But now the devil, on the other hand, here you've been picked on, the church folk trying to judge you, all that bull to keep you from getting right with God. Receive His rebuke. For whom the Lord does what? Loves. He chastens. And He scourges every what? Who receives. You know what? I don't tell the hell your neighbor children down the street how to behave. I don't go down there and go, Hey, hey, yeah, I'm going to spank your butt. You in time out. See, because they ain't my kids. But you let my kids do it? Butt, spank, time out, jack. Because see, I'm dad and I love my kids. God loves you. Receive His rebuke. Are y'all here? I feel like I'm beating a drum up here. Receive it. Receive it. Instead of getting mad at Him, be glad. Glad. You love me enough to care for me. To pull my butt out of the sling like you're trying to do. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Receive His rebuke. If you endure the chastening, God deals with you as what? For what son is he whom the father doesn't chasten? If you don't get chastened to the Lord, well, that's crazy because he does chasten his children. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof are all partakers, then you are a bad word in the Bible, bastards, and not sons. That's tough language, ain't it? You know what God says to you? I'm going to go ahead and say it. And cover your ears. God says you're not a bastard. Now, you brave ones, I'm going to let you say this with me. I am not a bastard. One, two, three. I am not a... God says this nasty. I cussed in church. I do it all the time, so I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. That's why I use the King James Bible. It's the only Bible that still has cussing in it. I'm sorry. That's a joke. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
That's a great truth. Aren't you glad God put it plain English for me today to see it on, in the Bible? Don't, you know, instead of saying, you know, saying I'm not going to receive your rebuke, receive your, the rebuke of God for what you're doing in your life, where you're at in your life. Receive it. Know you're a son. Feel good about it. And thank God it, that you're not a child of the devil anymore. Amen? Come on. Well, quit living like one. That's what God's trying to say. You belong to me. You matter to me. You have more value than you see that you have. Think that way. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. And we gave them reverence. When your dad, I don't know how you were, it was my mama with me. When mama corrected me, it wasn't like, ow, oh, ow, oh, I can't believe it. If you said, oh, oh, after she beat you, ow, you, ow, oh, oh, she beat you again. It was like, yes, ma'am. And we were good for like a week. You know? Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of what? And what? Live. I know I'm beating this point a little bit, but for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. You do think some parents have fun at it. But He for our what? That we might be partakers of holiness. Anytime God rebukes you, God, God is holy. God is not trying to get in your business. He's bigger than you, okay? He's doing it for your profit. That's why His Word is what His Word is. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. It isn't any fun. But it is grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the what? And isn't that what we want to get to? Say, it yields peace and the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down. Instead of feeling bad right now and horrible because you've sinned, you're away from God, know that He loves you. He's your Father. Receive rebuke. Lift your head up. Lift your hands up. Praise Him for that. And the feeble knees. And make straight what? Pass for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be what? Truly know that when He's re rebuked you and you've received that rebuke, and then you're going to repent of that, don't walk around with your head down. Don't walk around with your tail between your legs. Don't walk around like you're crippled. And still beat up and beat down. Because good chance you're going to go that way again if you act like that. Why don't you receive full forgiveness? Say full forgiveness. Why not receive full forgiveness? I'm not going around saying bragging, I did this and oh God. No, no, I ain't talking about any of that mess. I'm talking about in your own heart, in your own life, know that you've truly been forgiven because he's my dad. Got it today? Well, did we get some more points, Rod? Here we go. All right, there it is. Receive. We got double. We got a double. Say it with me. Receive. Y'all are so sleepy. One more time. Receive. Receive rebuke, man. Do I get some more points? Oh. Reveal it, Lord. Reveal it in me. Uh-oh. Repair it in me. Woo. So I, that's what I got. I got reveal it and what? So receive rebuke. Lord, reveal it in me. And repair it in me and help me. How do I get back to God? How do I get close to God again? How do I get back where I need to be? How do I live for God again? That's what we're talking about today. Fourth step, and we're getting closer to the end. Where have you been at on this chart? I don't know. You'll have to figure it out. Number four. Oh, boy. I told you. It's going to get ugly. Say that with me. What? Repent. repent before the Lord. The word repent means to turn. To turn, basically, and go the other direction. Okay, you're doing this. I ain't doing it no more. You see how we just did that? Say, yes or no? This is the way I'm living. This isn't right. Nope. I'm going to go this way. Repent before the Lord. Repent before. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean you might do this. And then you turn and you, you go. And you might even go, ah! You, you, you hear me? Say, come on. Repent before the Lord. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting or maturing holiness in the fear or the respect of God. 
That's what we're talking about. Now rejoice. Now I rejoice. Paul writing to a church that he had really corrected hard. He said, now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to what? For you were made sorry after a godly manner. Guys, sometimes it's really good to cry over the crap in your life. Excuse me. It's really good sometimes to look at your life and go, I, this is horrible. And feel sorry about it. And be brought to tears and feel horrific about your actions. That's a good thing. Amen. Say, I take that any day over excuse making and whining. Deal with it! And Paul said, look, I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive that you might receive damage by us in nothing. It's a good thing you got right with God. Sorry that you... They kept on being sorry about it. For godly sorrow works repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world works what? Read that verse with me again. Back it up. Say, say this verse with me. For godly sorrow works what? To salvation. Not to be what? If you repent before the Lord, you'll never be sorry you repented of it. If you repent before the Lord, you'll never be sorry or you'll never repent that you were sorry. You won't. You repent of the thing in your life and you're going to feel good about what you repented of. I'm not saying you're always going to get it just right. Hope you stay on the wagon. Not everybody does. But you're not going to be sorry for living for God. You're not going to be sorry from turning from that. That's going to be a good thing. It's going to be a good decision in your life. But the sorrow of the world works what? Death. For behold, this self-same thing that you sorrowed after godly sorrow, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, that's a good thing, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge, in all things you have approved yourselves to be what? Say clear. Again. Clear. Don't you want to be clear with God? Almost done. Isn't it a beautiful thing to be clear, the way clear between you and God? Isn't that what you want? Don't you want to pray without having to crawl over all the garbage in your life? When you can have that way clear, you can be clean. Not so I'm better than so and so. That's insanity. You want to be clean and you want the way clear so that you can have that right relationship with God. You can have Him working in your life. You can have peace in your life. Don't you want peace? Say, that's what this is all about. The Lord's not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness. If you repent, He'll forgive you. He's not like a lot of jokers in this world. They say one thing and they don't keep their word. Listen, He's not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness. But He's what? He's long-suffering toward us. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? God wants you to repent today. You might say, I want to do God's will. Well, for a lot of us, God's will is for us to repent. <laughs> Amen. Say, what can I do for God? Well, how about just start repenting, Jack? Start right there. And he's tickled with that. He's, he's really great with that. Start right there. All right, Raj, how are we doing, buddy? Here's another word, repent. But we're going to get some words off of it. Here we go. Return. Return to the Lord. Release whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is. Say, you know, I don't need it. I'm going to let it go. It's gone. It's done. I quit. I ain't doing it. Gone. Get. Get. Gone. Release. Remove it. Remove it. We're talking about repentance here. Okay? Return to the Lord. Release it. Remove it. And then say that last word with me. One more time. One more time. Hey, instead of not liking to retain God in your knowledge, how about let's get God in your knowledge and then you can, instead of retain, you can reframe. Isn't that the goal here? We're talking about getting right with God today. Oh, uh-oh. Reject that for your life. Reject that way of life and reject that for your life. Did you hear me? Let's do some inventory. It's okay because we're at home. How many would say,
well, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna go there. We're fine. Okay. I think you got it. Okay. Let's go to the last point. That's our goal. Is that our goal right there? Restored to the Lord. Say that with me. Restored. One more time. Restored. Restored. That's our goal. We started out. How do I start, Pastor? Respect. If you don't respect the ways of the Lord, you're not going to be restored to the Lord. You can show up on Sunday. You can dress it up. Carry your big Bible. Lit, lit, lit. You're not restored. These are biblical steps. If you repent, my God is faithful and just to forgive you. Amen? Restored to the Lord. I love Psalms. I don't like what David did. I can't stand it. I don't like the adultery in his life. I hate it. I hate adultery. Because I've, I've experienced it and I've experienced the pain of it. But I'm so glad that God allowed this man to be in the Bible. <laughs> Aren't you say? I love this. Now we've all sinned. I want you to see what this man says. This man not only committed adultery, he was a man after God's own heart. It's obvious that God loved him. He loved God. There's no doubt about it. He ended up having the man killed. Remember the story? Say, oh my gosh. And look at what David says. He's repented. He writes in Psalm 51, Make me to hear joy and gladness. That the bones which you have broken may what? Rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my what? Iniquity. Oh, I love verse 10, don't you? Say it with me. Create in me a... Oh God. And what? A right spirit within me. Don't you love that? Say. And look what he says. Cast me not away from your presence. Don't take your what? Holy Spirit from me. I love this. This is what we're talking about today. Now this is your God who wrote the Word of God. He put all this in the Bible so you and I could know it. Isn't that beautiful? He uh, lets you see the, the, the faults and failures of all of the different writers and players and the people in the Scriptures so that you and I can get some strength. David says, Restore unto me the what? The joy of my salvation. If you're not right with God, if you're not living for God, if you're away from God, if you remain in your sin, I'm going to tell you something right now. You do not have joy in your life. Not the joy of God. But He will forgive you. And if you ask Him, you can have that joy back in your heart again. And you might have it greater than you ever had. Amen? Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with your what? Don't you want to be free? Say. Did you know free is like my favorite word now? I love free. I always like free because stuff's free. How many love buy one get one free? Do you love that? And I didn't even know nowadays you got the cell phones because I'm a nut. I don't know stuff. You can go to Chili's. You should never go to Chili's without pulling out your cell phone and hitting that app and what? you get free stuff. How many do that? How many didn't know you could do that? You need to go start doing it. I love free. But I love being free in my spirit. I love being free in my spirit. That's why for me in my life, and I'm not going to get too personal because we're done, but for me in my life, one of the things I could have held on to would have been bitterness, 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 bitterness. But you know bitterness is a big sin. Did you know that? Say it's horrible. Being bitter is a, is a pain in the rear. That's horrible. And you know what? I've chosen free over being bitter. Amen? Say, come on. I want to be free. But I've chosen free over a lot of sin in my life too. Sins that I've committed and things like that. It's helped me get right with God because I want free more than that mess. Did you get the message today? Come on. We're about done. Rog, I think we scored pretty good. I think we won. Restored is our word. Renewed 
and revived. Say that with me. Restored and then renewed and what? Revived. That's what we're talking about today. Can you say this? Really? This is the last verse, anybody. Come on. If we, say it with me. If we confess our, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There we go. Those are some good steps. Let's praise the Lord for His Word today. I thought it was pretty good. Praise the Lord. Amen.